If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to Downfall Network for more cool content. What's up, everyone? Thrones Miller here once again. I'm the Crack Nick. And I'm Jam and John. And we have an album review for you. So we had an EP drop that we were very interested in reviewing with a new release from Serox, simply called Vor. This came out on Everlasting Spew Records on the 26th of June. This is the second EP that this band has released, and they also have four full lengths. And this is an interesting lineup. It originally started in Guadalajara, Mexico, and since that time, there's only one original member of the guitarist who's also a multi-instrumentalist. And it has an international flavor now. The vocalist on this album is from France, and the bassist is from Canada and also plays in the band Cathelius, or Cathelius, I can't... I think it's Cathelius. It's hard to pronounce that one. It even has a something, little hyphen in it. Something with a cuth and then an ubius. Ilius. Either way, <laughs> it's a really cool death metal band from Canada you should definitely check out. Now, we were both exposed to this band from their last full length, The Phobos slash Demio Suite, which we both thought was really solid tech death. Or more along the lines of brutal technical death yeah, metal. Actually, I reviewed them on a What's John Jammin segment. And I got them in a uh, mystery box from Everlasting Spew. So, yeah, we're both very well versed yeah. with this band, at least in their last release. Now, this is an interesting EP in the way it is set up. And I'm going to kind of tell you how I think it's kind of set up. First two tracks definitely represent more of their present sound, at least what you heard in the full length. Next two tracks, possibly the future of their sound. And then the last two tracks are kind of the past, since they're a pair of demos. Now, getting into the first two tracks, it is straightforward, brutal, technical death metal. Yep. It's fast, it's flying, it's very comparable to bands like Benighted, especially vocally. Vocally, yes. he's very yes, similar. And he's also French, too. Yep. I think there's a connection. Uh, the music more along the lines of, say, Beneath the Massacre or Aborted. Spawn of Possession, I got a lot of that, especially in the guitar work. It is blazing fast. And I have to say, I love the bass work on here. I like the bass work yeah, on their full length. The, really, really good stuff. Yeah, the the bass is pretty out front too, and it's it's not overbearing on the tone. No, it, it's it, very I don't know, kind of jazzy in spots, kind of funky yeah. in spots. Like the opening, the second track, "Building a Shrine Upon Vanishing Sands," which that's a hell of a title. Yeah, actually, kind of opens with like a little almost less Claypool like that's flourish. That's what I said, like a <laughs> like a primacy bass lead in, but it's only. I don't know, two, three seconds, it's not long at all. But it was enough to really kind of set it apart and make you go, huh, that was kind of cool. Now, while this band is just a blur of riffs, I really like the fact that they included some melody, especially mm -hmm. in the first track towards the end. There is a whole part there where it almost kind of sounds like high-speed neoclassical metal. Wow. Uh, like very the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, very much like Gorod. Mm -hmm. And... I think the melody really stood out there, and then even in the second track, which I'm not saying the name again because that was long, <laughs> very close to Arch Spire in spots, and... And Beyond Creation. Yeah, and Beyond yep. Creation for sure. And then, this is the only song that includes a solo, and the solo is very, very melodic. And this is what I'm more compared to neoclassical, was the actual solo. It actually sounds like a composure. Yeah. So. It's, it's broken up into two parts, but, I mean, they're both excellent parts and they kind of work well together like you almost kind of didn't need that middle section where they just kind of you know broke it down for a second and had some good growls and you mm -hmm. know shit like that but the solo itself is very stand out in fact that's the thing that really stands out between these two songs that really differentiates them i also like the fact that the first sample you hear as soon as this album starts is a sample from starcraft way to go nerds love it <laughs> now the next two tracks are decidedly different in tone and feel and atmosphere. Mm -hmm. There are elements of their older sound, at least like that straightforward tech death sound, but these songs favor atmosphere, dissonant riffs, chuggy riffs, a little bit slower tempo. So Shallow Vaults is about a minute and a half long, and it's just this melodic interlude with uh, acoustic guitar. Acoustic guitar. I think it seems like a cello. There might be a sample playing in the background. Yeah. But it's this really melodic thing, and I think it's a perfect lead-in for the next two songs. Yeah. Um, such as in the Temple of Knowledge, the beginning of that has this really cool kind of ambient jam out, but... <laughs> it's notably different than what they had going on the first two tracks. More dissonant melodies. There's still that technical flair in there, and 
it still has tech death elements, but this one is definitely more about atmosphere, more about yes, distinct yes, melodies. It's the far less chaotic. Yeah. It's very more straightforward, but again, encompasses more yeah. of that melody found on the interlude. And they pretty much abandon the gravity blast on this song, especially. Like this is more of just kind of a straightforward like old school blast beat it's really not like the super fast gravity blast or a hyper blast which those definitely appear on this album this is more in the like vein of like aborted and they're more slower more atmospheric yeah, yeah. moments and a band like maybe rivers of nile i really like this and then moving into self-devour I have to say that opening riff is not metal at all. It really doesn't sound metal. And at I all. didn't hear it at first. Like I, I played it, and then he was like, "I'm comparing it to blah blah blah," and I said, "Hold on." Yeah, I was like, "Man, you heard it again?" Honestly, it's a very almost alternative rock riff. It's very ambient. It doesn't have that dark, foreboding tone. It sounds more like something you'd hear in a band like Hum or even Smashing Pumpkins. Now. It's cool because it starts off isolated and it starts bringing in the other instruments mm -hmm. and it turns into a metal song mm -hmm. and how they blend this melody in with straight up Yeah, metal. like when the actual like drum and bass kick in, it, it becomes a metal riff. But it sounds like something off of Siamese Dream. Yeah. Those matching pumpkins. Uh, and again, this song yeah. is more about groove and atmosphere. And despite them kind of shifting back to a little bit more of their comfort zone with, you know, more straight up tech death in the back half of the song, it still returns to that opening section mm -hmm. that was decidedly mm -hmm. different. And I like the dynamics, I like the contrast in the song. It took some chances, and I think the payoff is a standout song in here. This yes. was one of my yes. favorites. Yeah, mine too. Now, the back half, the last two tracks are demos. Now you get to hear the demo version of Nihilus, which is the second track on the Phobos Demio Suite, and you also get to hear Anthropic, which was the opening track on this. Now both of these demos came out in 2011, and they were recorded in 2011, so it's interesting to hear the rough draft version, and <laughs> yes. the it's, production's it's, a little bit different. Yeah, it's, it's unmixed, uncompressed. Um, the drums are out in front, really which, out isn't, in front. which isn't a horrible thing though, because you actually get to hear his level of talent. You actually pick up things like the ghost notes and the, the little nuances and the... Dudes it, yeah, flying. Yeah, it's pretty slick. I thought these were good and also, you know, you get to hear the rough trap and what they turn into. Especially Anthropic because the demo for it is about two minutes shorter than mm -hmm. the version that opens up this EP. So you get to hear what they added, what they took out, and that's really cool, but I mean, honestly... Didn't really need the two demos at the end. It kind of felt like they were padding out the length, but it is an interesting little sort of retrospective. Like, this is a flash in their past where they started and where they are now and where they might be in the future. So this whole EP is kind of an interesting little journey. And as for an EP, like, there's a lot of content on it. Yes, here. yes. And, you know, a lot of interesting song craft. So overall, I'm going to give this three and a half stars. I really enjoyed this. I especially enjoyed the last two tracks of the EP that weren't the demos. I thought that showed a lot of really interesting songwriting flair, and that's kind of what I'd like to hear in the future. Of course, you can still mix that in with all their you know regular brutal tech stuff, but I really liked what they did there, and those melodies really stuck with me. Opening two tracks were good too, but I think there is like promise for the future there. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's what I liked as well. I mean, overall, I, I like the whole EP. I've been a Sirex fan for a while. I still regret not picking up that first CD. At MDF last year. But anyway, I, I gave it a three and a half. I, I agree with Nick. I like the, the back half two songs better than the, the front half. And the, the demos were cool. It was I, I like instrumental jams too, so the fact that they put on yeah. two instrumental jams was cool. But you know, I'm I'm hoping that the back two tracks are a precursor to what comes in the future because I'd rather see them take that path than go back to their original. Yeah sounds. So, yeah, yeah, these guys are definitely forging ahead. I, I really like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, me too. So, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we have a giveaway going on right now for a 5 CD stack. There is a video that should play as soon as you jump on our channel and it'll show you what it, all you get. Pretty much just comment on that video, share the video, and of course subscribe and you're entered. So, with that, thank you guys very much for watching and we will catch you later. Bye!